In this video tutorial, we're going to cover the alarm reporting features in Dream Report. Dream Report provides all the tools to create an ISA 18.2 compliant reports and dashboards. The 18.2 standard specifies general principles and processes for the management and rationalization of alarms. The key to this is being able to connect to any alarm source in your plant, roll up and contextualize the alarms, which then allows your operators and managers to focus on and respond to what's important. As with all Dream Report reports, these reports can be automatically scheduled, triggered on any event and distributed, or automatically update in a browser-based portal. The last key piece of this is feeding the alarm metrics back into the HMI or control system, where operators can take appropriate actions based on this knowledge. This is accomplished using the Dream Report's reporting data server. Alarm reporting in Dream Report can be broken down into four core components. Dream Report includes an extensive set of native alarm drivers for various automation platforms. These drivers connect to and expose all available alarm parameters from each alarm source. Additionally, using the Advanced ODBC Historical Alarms driver, you can connect to any custom SQL alarm data logger. Next, you configure your alarm filters. Filters are made up of one or more conditions and are used to focus your alarm analytics and displays on different predefined alarm criteria. These filters can be used with any of the alarm metrics and with any of the alarm visualization objects. The rich set of alarm functions and KPIs allow you to contextualize your raw alarm data and include all the key metrics identified in the 18.2 standard. And finally, the alarm metrics can be displayed in any of the many data, tabular, and graphical objects. So, the question is if this view of your alarm and event data is helpful in identifying key alarm-related issues and making better informed decisions, or this. Here we see the exact same data, but presented in ways that let you quickly identify trouble spots, areas of opportunity for improvement, whether due to operator performance, equipment performance, or process adjustments, and help focus on those activities. And in this example, in the top part, we have a quick visual of how we're trending with our alarms compared to the previous week. Again, impossible to judge just by looking at the raw alarm logs. I'm now going to switch over to my Dream Report Studio and walk through the steps for setting up an alarm report. I already have an alarm driver configured to an automation system's alarm logs. In the Filters tab, you'll see I've already created a few filters. Let me create a new one. I'd like a filter that only shows high priority alarms for any alarms in my reactor's alarm area. I'll add each field to filter on, add the specific condition, and then name and add the filter to the list. Now that the alarm driver is configured, I need to let the rest of the project know all about the alarm filters. Using the Alarm and Events Filters tool, I can either specify priority-based alarm filters, or add the custom filters I had defined in each alarm driver. Here, I'll select the alarm source I'd created ahead of time, and select and add its custom filters. At this point, these filters can be accessed from the reporting objects. In the new report, I'll start by adding an alarm table object. In this case, I'd like to roll up all alarms from my reactor alarms group by the number of occurrences of each alarm, but also to filter out short duration or nuisance alarms. I first need to select my alarm filters for the table, so I'll click the Edit List and select Predefined Reactors Alarm Filter. Now let me exclude all alarms with a duration of less than 10 seconds. And then set the time period to be the last 8 hours. Now let's set up the appearance of the table. Here you see all the available alarm fields for this data source. Since I want to summarize by the number of alarm occurrences, I'll choose the option to display as an event list, and then display every alarm once. While we're at it, let's do a Pareto sort by the number of occurrences descending. I'll do some basic formatting now. And then the last thing I want to do is highlight any alarm that occurred more than 25 times. I'll click on the Advanced Options button, and then set those to red text.
Finally, I'll set a couple of options so that we can interact with the table on the Dream Report web portal. The next object I'll add is a bar chart, where I want to see the split between the number of short and long duration high priority alarms by hour for a shift. I'll add a bar graph here. The chart will be based on an alarm mode. Once I select that option, we can then pick which alarm metrics we want to use. I'll first pick the count of short duration alarms and then select the predefined high priority filter. I then need to configure this to look for alarms less than 10 seconds in duration. The overall time period for the chart will be the last shift and the bar periods will be one hour. Let me name this bar and then add it. I'll repeat it, but for the long duration alarms, in this case longer than five minutes. I'll then do a little formatting, and we're done with this object. The last object I'll add to this report is an automatic statistic table to summarize my conveyor alarms using several of the alarm metrics. I'll select and then draw the table here. While alarms are not tag specific, this table requires at least one tag to be selected so that we can assign calculations. I'll pick any tag from a data source. It won't actually be used here. and then select several alarm statistics. Now for each of these, I need to pick the alarm filter on which to perform the calculation, and then any other parameters needed. For all of these, I'll pick the conveyor alarm filter, change the caption, and set the data formats. For the alarm rate metrics, I want to look at the number of alarms in 10 minute periods. Now let me do some formatting changes under the Appearance tab. Resize the table, and then we're done. This report could be scheduled to run at the end of every shift or any other period, or generate it on demand. I'm going to open up the Dream Report web portal to generate it. Let me select the report and generate it. And let's take a look at how all these alarms have been put into context. We see the big hitters with respect to alarms in our reactors area. Looks like we need to focus on our temperature alarms. Looking at the hourly bar graph, we're definitely seeing a lot of high priority chattering alarms around certain periods of the day. The longer duration alarms seem to be in check. And in the summary of our conveyor alarms, our alarm counts look relatively low for the day, but we can observe that the peak period of alarms in a 10 minute period started at this point in time. There's obviously a lot more you can do with the alarm reporting in Dream Report, as we can see in this completed example. Observe the different metrics and how they allow you to focus in on certain key parameters of your alarm system. And let's take a quick look at an ad hoc report, where we expose the predefined filters, as well as any other custom filter you might want to use. Here I'll select predefined alarm filter. But do a wildcard search, only looking for alarms relating to temperatures. I'll refresh the report, and here's our results. There's obviously a lot more you can do with the alarm reporting, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of Dream Report's alarm reporting capabilities. Thanks for watching.